Hello everybody, welcome to my first round World Cup predictions. I'll be making four of these, one for each quarter of the draw. And here's the fourth quarter, so once again I'll just look at the teams and give my picks. So first up we have a human mirror between Stephen Cabusta. Uh, the Ram Ass is a good name, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of a good build, build, isn't it? It's kind of the anti-elf anti build and then block. Anti-elf with block on the thrower for strip ball. Well, I say anti-elf, anti-wood anti elf. 12 players, 3 rerolls, apo, 3 guard, tackle block. Pretty standard. Good build from Steve. And then Cabusta has arguably gone more anti-elf by having the mighty blow rather than the extra extra guard there. Um, and he's gone block on the catcher rather than block on the thrower. Maybe that's the idea to take the double um, to be the guard on the catcher after game one. So yeah, I was wrong about it being arguably more any because he doesn't have, I thought he had block on the thrower. Um, that's very, very strange. Uh, very strange, but yeah, maybe he's thinking block guard on this catcher after the first game. But I think block on the thrower in case you face Wood Elves, but he is not facing Wood Elves. So it's coming down essentially to Mighty Blow versus Guard, isn't it? Because uh, the block on the thrower probably not going to be that relevant. Block on the catcher probably not going to be that relevant. So it's, but basically comes down to three guard versus two guard to Mighty Blow. Mighty Blow, you know, if, if you're lucky, it's great. If not, it's it's worthless, whereas guard is always reliable. So for that reason, I'll give the edge to Steve in that one. Next up, we have Mr. Marvel versus Arzawain. Uh, they're both PS4 coaches, I believe. I don't know. I think they're, they're both console coaches. I imagine both PS4. Um, three rerolls, no apo, four fan factor. Two troll slayers, two blitzers, two runners. No guard on the blitzers. Don't like that. He's got guard on long beards. Mighty blow on the blitzer. I'd rather have mighty blow on a long beard. Maybe he's planning to get panning on mighty blow, and and uh, mighty blow panning on. Sorry, I, this is the first thing in the morning here because I didn't have time to finish my predictions last night. M maybe his plan is for panning on mighty blow, um, and that's why I took it on the higher movement guy. But really, I'd rather have mighty blow on either the frenzy guy or the tackle guy, and I would like guard on the mobile players. Um, so I read uh, block on the run is fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really a fan of this build. And he's facing Arzawain, who I know a little bit. I know that he's won the Champs Ladder in PS4 four times, and I know he qualified through the Invitational. So um, he's gone with the kind of standard, what I expected people to go with for humans. Three rerolls, Apo, 12 guys. Mighty Blow Tackle, block, three guard. Absolutely standard, and I think it's better than dwarves, and certainly better than this dwarf build. So I've got to back Arzawain in this one. Now we have another human mirror between Debaser and Andre. Um, Debaser's gone for the you know the standard human build player wise. Everyone's gone this build player wise. He's gone a bit strange though. He's got block on a catcher, guard on a blitzer, sure. Block guard, stacking the ogre out the gate. Fair enough. I mean, I think the ogre's a fair player. To stack on the only bad thing is if he if he boneheads it's bad times isn't it and he's not mobile against elves and then tackle blow might tackle blow oh my god tackle mighty blow guy for you know hitting people um it's all right but i don't like only two guard and i don't really like one of the guards being on the ogre it's good in better in the bash matchups but not so good in the uh, other matchups but i guess he's got flexibility on the last how to build the last two blitzers depending on opponents if, if he gets through the rounds. And he's up against Andri, who has built the, what I expected to be the standard human build, same as Arzawain's that I've just done. Um, so yeah, just, just for the build, I'm gonna give the advantage here to Andri. I mean, I know DeBase is a good coach. I've heard Andri's a good coach as well. So let's give him the win there. Anything could happen though. In all these games, anything could happen, you know, but there you go. Now I've got Yagul versus Pupok. Um, yeah, Gull has gone for the reroll Apo. I, I, after thinking about this, I realised I realised with stacking the Apo is probably better in the later rounds. You got more skills and your players are worth more. So I think the Apo is more of a gamble for later rounds. Uh, but even then, even in the first round, the Apo and rerolls close. But thinking about it, if I'd gone back, maybe I could 
if I could change it, maybe I would have gone with an apple, but never mind. Um, these three skills are standard. Tackle strip leader. And he's got a sidestep on the catcher. I mean, it gives him a better chance of a one turn, but I would have rather seen a more useful skill there, I think. But, you know, the buddies, uh, so <laughs> they're good. And Pupok's gone with Necro without ghouls. Which, <laughs> he's still got four players that are fast-ish. Two medium speed guys and two fast players. But he's got no dodge. He's got three guard, he's got a tackler, he's got a block, a mighty blow. Maybe he's planning on going piling on on this guy. Um, he's got a great record with Necro, but I think no ghouls is, is not good. You know, I think you need that movement, especially against Wood Elves. So just the fact he's missing the ghouls, I'm going to back the Wood Elves there. But the guard's good. Next up, we've got Tiss versus Sam T. Um, another another person who's gone with Amazons who hasn't gone any positional uh, any other positionals other than the Blitzers. Two two guards, a mighty blow, and a wrestle. I think that's fine. Maybe he's could have gone three guards, but uh, yeah, four rerolls and an apo and thirteen players. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty solid build, isn't it? That they get and then four fan factor, good chance of one or even two fame. Um, so yeah, they're 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 always a strong choice, Amazons. Uh, the the problem is people having mighty blow tacklers in in this format, and mighty blow tackle is exactly what Sam T has here uh, by going by going the uh, tier two high elves rather than tier one wood elf, uh, tier one dark elves or wood elves I guess. Um, this is, looks more like a dark elf team with only two catchers. Um, he's got dodge like you would with dark elves, but he's only got three, you know, two dodges rather than three blodges. Um, the leader for a fourth reroll, I don't think is really necessary. Um, but there you go, and he's got the Apo, but only eleven players. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's a great. I don't think high elves are a great choice. But having mighty blow tackle means that he's got a shot of beating the Amazons. Um, I do think the Amazons are probably stronger, so much stronger than high elves that a mighty blow tackle isn't going to help him that much. So, uh, especially as he's got the reserves. So let's go for the Amazons in this one. So next up we have Andy Davo's Dark Elves versus Bernie Buffon's Humans. Um, I think I'm surprised Dark Elves weren't taken so much because I think this build of three Blitzers, two Witch Elves, two Rerolls, Apo, it gives you a lot of reliability with the Armour 8. Um, and the Apo, Edge 4, loads of Blodge, stacking, so you, you know you get five super duper positionals. I think they're a really strong pick, uh, Dark Elves, and I am surprised they haven't been taken so much. But they are a little, they're slightly weaker than humans, I think, in the first round, and maybe Wood Elves as well. And they maybe don't have the raw power of some of the other teams, but they do make up for it with reliability, um, with the Edge 4 and the Dodge, Blodge Spam. So Bernie won the Invitational uh, with a kind of janky build with loads of Mighty Blow Tacklers. This time he's gone for the more standard build of block, mighty blow tackle three guard. I think it's a great build. Um, I've just got a horrible feeling that Bernie's going to blow it. <laughs> um, in the invitational, every invitational match, when the opponent showed him the sideline, he grabbed it with both hands. And if he does that against Dave, or if he if he, if he goes on the sideline against two witch elves, he's going to get his whole team served, and he's not going to score. And I just, I'm not sure he's, you know, I've just, I've just got a bad feeling that he's just, he's just going to blow it. I think he's going to, I think he's going to make a big, big mistake or a few big mistakes. And, you know, this is the problem with humans, even though they're good. And, you know, against elves, they're going to make you roll one in nines. And if you fail them, you're going to lose. On the other hand, his mighty blow could could kick in and and on the face of it the teams are pretty even slight advantage to Bernie maybe 55 45 on the teams game one uh but yeah I'm, I'm unfortunately I you know it's not that I don't have faith in Bernie I've just got I've just got you know it's like when England play you just think oh they're gonna blow it I just know they're so sure they're gonna throw it away they're gonna blow it away but um hopefully he doesn't so but uh I'm gonna back Dave or to beat him sorry now I have Chap Ksu versus Ornan. Um, we have a standard team selection 
for the woodies here. No, we don't. We've got not so standard. He has dropped the tree to go with the apple, which likely makes him stronger against other woodies, but weaker against humans. Um, he's got kick on the thrower. I hate using one of your four skills on kick. I hate that decision. Um, I don't hate the decision to drop the tree, but it certainly does make him weaker against humans. And humans is what Ornan has. So <laughs> Ornan is the only person who started with Mighty Blow piling on, and it's, it's a fine idea, isn't it? You know, um, that, That's going to give him a really good chance of attritioning down the, the Wood Elves. When I was thinking of Wood Elves, I thought of people having tackle Mighty Blow. I didn't really consider the possibility of piling on Mighty Blow. And yeah, he, he, could, he could just steamroll the woodies. He, he, you know, there's no tree for him to worry about. Uh, block and tackle guard guard is pretty standard. He is lacking guard a little bit. He doesn't have block on the thrower, so he's he's a bit susceptible to getting uh you know leapt on and and powed. But as long as he as long as he positions his guards well, the piling on mighty blow guy could just take over the game. So uh, yeah, I, I I think I'm gonna back on and just due to the basically due to the kick on the leader kind of wasting one of his skills and uh, and the lack of the tree I think I, it, you know and humans are already properly favoured well maybe not favoured <laughs> maybe favoured humans against wood elves but I, I think especially the, with these builds um, I back on and there and last but definitely not least it's uh, <laughs> funny that I'm on the, the last game isn't it on the thing um, yeah there you go that's, that's my team um Absolutely standard team selection, the players. The the block on the tackle is a bit weak, I think. Maybe I should have gone wrestle on a lineman. Arguably could have stacked tackle on the dancer to start because he's not going to use a... He's not going to be... I, I, after seeing Zola's team, I quite like that, actually, stacking tackle strip on one because you're just not going to give him mighty blow or guard or anything. Maybe you could give him a sidestep, but... Yeah, I think that's probably starting with double tackle might have been the play, um, but as it happens, I didn't. I got dwarves first round anyway, so yeah. But I think that you know I'm, maybe it's a wrestle. A wrestler might have been the best one actually, just a wrestle lino, but slightly weak in the first round. But the idea is to get guard after game one. And up against Dwarves, which is the only team that Wood Elves don't have a winning record against in NAF style tournaments. However, it's still only 49, it's still only 51% of the Dwarves and 49% of the Woodies. So it's not a terrible matchup by any means. I do, however, think he's picked very good skills, block, so I can't do the leap in very well. Two guard and the mobile players, another guard, so he hasn't even kind of wasted his skill on Mighty Blow. He's got mapped as much guard as he could, well, nearly as much guard as he could get, combined with a block on his runner. Three rerolls, no apple. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that I didn't go with an apple, which could be costly against dwarves, couldn't it? Um, so yeah, I think I got a little bit unlucky getting dwarves in the first round. And he's also played like 250 games in Champs Ladder, 240 with dwarves. So he's just a dwarf specialist. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm. I like to be negative about my own chances anyway. Uh, so. You know, but I, again, like the Bernie match, I've just got a really bad feeling that I'm going to go out in the first round. So there you go. I've just got a bad feeling about this, guys. So I'm going to pick Azagal to win that one. So there's my uh, there's my predictions overall for the the fourth one. And there uh, there you go. I've predicted every every first round game. Of course, anything can happen there. Uh, at the time that I've made this video, actually, there's already been a few games, and two of them have been absolute dicings that you know no one could no one could have really won if they were on the other end of them. So, you know, anything can happen in any of these games, really. Interestingly, Steve Ockerbuster could use humans and could only face humans and, like, win the whole tournament only facing humans as well as using humans, which would be pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, you know, hopefully I'm wrong with, uh, with at least one of these. But, uh, you know, there you go. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.